Hey, welcome back to Packers Playbook. I am Dusty Evu. With me as always is 97.3 The, the Game's John Kuhn. John, is there anything better than walking in with playoff implications on the line, walking into a division opponent, and just absolutely destroying them in their own house? Uh, no, nothing better than it. Um, and the fact that they had everything to play for as well. Both teams came in with identical records. Both teams with the same kind of you know playoff implications at stake. And, uh, and one team ready for the task here, and that was the Green Bay Packers. And, you know, a lot can be said about the Vikings playing a couple backup quarterbacks, you know, on their offensive side and what the defense was able to do. But really, it was our offense against a defense in Minnesota that has been more attacking this year, more physical this year, uh, more of an unknown for opponents as they try and game plan for them. And, you know, going into it now, when you play this version of the Minnesota defense, the Brian Flores defense, you got to be ready for for blitz. You got to have a plan for pressure, for seven up looks, for you know, for some gap scheme type looking plays here. So you better be ready for Minnesota bringing the heat and bringing it off them. Yeah, I've not gone through everything yet in terms of like how many they had at the line on average, and then how many they dropped and all that stuff. But PFF PFF charts a blitz as uh, times you send more than four, so five men or more. Minnesota blitzed seventy five point eight percent of the time in this game, which is an absurd number. And they had a plan for it every single time. Like I said, we're going to get to it. Uh, I thought Love played, I don't know about his best game, a tremendous game given what this defense was throwing at him. So, John, let's get rolling. This first one here, let me have my little overlay there. First play is going to be this big touchdown to read off a post. Second and 10, 11 personnel. You got this kind of a two-by-two two look. I think there was a little shift there. Maybe I missed that. Play Off play action. Looks like you got Verts. Love off his back foot, throwing a dime to read on the post. John, what do you got here? Yeah, go ahead and start it from the beginning. Let's get that motion there out of Tucker Craft. And to have a plan for blitz, you gotta you gotta have a set of rules. And here you go. The Packers walk up to the line of scrimmage. Doesn't look anything too complicated. About five up on the line of scrimmage. You put Tucker Craft in motion, change the protection. Watch Jordan Love here right before the snap of the ball. He's gonna change protection. He's gonna slide the line. Harrison Smith, they love to bring him when he's snugged up there. They like to bring him on pressure, especially when it turns into strong safety at D. That's what they have here. Can slide the line there, and you know you got Aaron Jones to protect you with the backer inside pressing over top of the center. Why is this important? Because Jordan Love is going to have some deep patterns here. He's going to have some four-vert type um, mentality here, and he's going to have to read this thing out for a good bit of time. So go ahead and let this thing run, Dusty. Like I said, we got the slide there. Pick that up. Step back, now, toss is, it over. What is that? The kind of a that, they drop into like kind of a, a funky Tampa two there, John. Is that what it looks like to you? Version of a Tampa two here, where they kind of have the corner drop in, the, the, the backer in safety playing outside, and it's just a weird way to get to it with an inside backer chasing. And I think it catches Jordan Love a little bit by surprise here um, because his feet aren't set. Normally, if you're going to throw this ball versus Tampa 2, you want to have your feet set and you want to be pumping that thing over top of that middle linebacker and into the receiver, splitting those two safeties. Here, Jordan Love's feet aren't set, but he gets this little, this little hop throw to it where he can just hurl this thing down the field. And it's incredible arm strength out of Jordan Love to be able to place this ball in that spot. This thing was not in the air very long, Dusty. The travel as far as it did, not in the air very long. But it goes to show you, you come in, you have a plan, you get your protection set the right way, trust that you're going to have the time, and then when you see it, you uncork it, and Jordan Love did just that. Like you said, it looks like he's trying to, like, he sees that drop, he's looking to create a little bit, then he realizes, oh, I can get this over. And then, like you said, he's got that hop step. Just, an, I, I mean, with no, with no feet on the ground, completely off platform there, that's a tremendous throw. And that thing was like a missile. Dusty did not stay in the air very long. Got from point A to point B right up over the top. Beautiful throw by Jordan Love, but it was the plan at the line of scrimmage that got that thing done. 100%. 100%. John, anything else on this one? You want to hit the next one? Let's get rolling. All right, dude. We have got this big Melton deep cross around on second and eight, 11 personnel. Uh, we've got, I mean, I've got this track. This, uh, it looks like a cover zero look to me. It looks like straight man to man. You've got a lot of guys at the line. I have, I have them with eight at the line. I think they end up bringing six. They do drop a couple just based off coverage. Buying time, making that big throw to Melton across the field. John, what do you got? You're going to see this uh, even again in our highlights. And by the way, Dusty, there were so many great plays to highlight here. We had a hard time whittling it down. 
we are some men who like buffets, and I know this because we could only whittle it down to five. We could not get our plate small enough here for this segment. But nonetheless, the Packers' plan for All Up Look was to put some people in motion, create some chaos on the, on the second side for, uh, for Minnesota, see which guys get moving around. And if they're moving behind their line of scrimmage, they're not necessarily pinning arrows back and coming. Right here, the Packers uh, send Jaden Reed in motion here. And this sets up some time for Jordan Love. You'll see, you'll see some people start to drop out because they understand if it's man, I got to cover this guy out to this side. So Jordan knows he's going to have a little bit of time, but with zero on the back end, he knows he's not going to have a lot. So he's going to have to buy himself some time. Jordan Love realizes that, buys himself some time behind the line of scrimmage. And what I love about this play is, as the time Jordan Love's get ready and set up and throw, Bill Mountain's not open yet, but Jordan knows where he's going to be open. So he throws him to a space. He doesn't throw to the man. And Jordan Love here, with pressure all up in his face, able to complete a big ball. Yeah, and this is something, too, I know earlier in the year, and I don't know if this is just because this is off his back foot. We know he's got the arm for it. We'd seen him in the past sometimes try to be a little too perfect with some of these where you're trying to lead him up the field, get him but with a guy this, this wide open. I like that you kind of lead him across the field, give him a chance to run underneath that and grab that as opposed to trying to make this perfect. You see him slow down and stop. He doesn't need to make a perfect throw here, and I like that this is something we, we've seen kind of an evolution of love as the season's gone on here. And we'll look at it here. I think uh, Dylan has a really nice blitz pick, pick up here, too, if I'm not mistaken. It kind of buys some initial time. Yeah, again, we're going to slide the line to the left. Dylan's going to fit into that linebacker to the right. You're going to get a little chip block by the tight end there. Just enough to hold the safety as he waits for him before he releases. And then Jordan, you know, A.J. Dylan's got a broken thumb. He's out there doing the best he can in pass pro. Jordan realizes that, buys a little bit more time. And look at that with pressure right there in his face. He's able to flick a ball downfield 35 yards. Dusty, people don't realize this. Jordan Love's got the biggest hands in the National Football League, 10 and a half inches across. That's all it takes when you have that big of hands, just a little flick of the wrist, and that thing can go downfield. Yeah, the incredible play, like you said, really good uh, recognition of kind of everything going on in front of him, sliding that line, knowing how much time he had, and then knowing where Melton was going to be to be able to just kind of wait until the last moment, wait until he was able to kind of break free from – what looked to be a bit of a maybe a miscommunication there, maybe a little little pick action on the back end there, and really just just throw Melton open to space. You really love to see that stuff. Um, John, anything else on this one? You got uh, you want to hit the next one? Let's hit the next one because this is Jordan Love's best throw of the ball game. Um, they, they they show a little bit of a pressure look at the beginning of the snapper, maybe six man, but he knows he's got a deep play action. He sees the linebacker drop off the line of scrimmage. It could be a five man rush. But he trusts it. He trusts the plan because he knows he has enough blockers for defenders. And to come back and unhurl this ball to the sideline like this, up over the second level, before the cornerback can react, and right on a dime to the outside to Jaden Reed, watch how he takes his drop. Watch how he steps into the throw. And check this thing out. This is – it travels about 28 yards in the uh, – you know, for yardage-wise in the playbook. But that's like a 40, 45-yard throw as you're throwing it hash to sideline. I'm not great at the Pythagorean theorem, but I know it's more than 28 yards, and that thing is on a bullet. It absolutely is, yeah. And this is something again we've seen from him. Uh, some of the accuracy stuff in early in the season. Sometimes he was he'd had a tendency to leave that inside a little bit more, getting thrown that away from there. Like you said, he layers it over 44 there. Just it's tremendous opposite hash throw there. Uh, you love to see that. We'll look at it from the other side again, just so we can see that kind of 44 dropping underneath there. But we don't, I don't think we want to spend a lot of time on this one. Um, we just want to say this, like you said, best throw of the game. Might as well point it out when we see it, right? I think it's his best throw of the game because it's the most technical throw of the game. It's trusting the protection. It's taking your drop. It's stepping into the throw exactly the way the transition is supposed to be. And man, I think, I mean, if there's a bullseye one yard off the sideline, he's hitting that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Tremendous throw. Good read from him. Uh, and that's off uh, off jet motion from Reed, if I'm not mistaken, as well. A lot of motion. I mean, the they Packers are a lot of yo-yo motion, I guess, really. Packers use a lot of motion in this game, which they tend to do anyway. And like you said, get some nice tells off that defense, get them off balance a little bit. Really nice route from Reed there as well to create separation at the top of the route. Nicely done all the way around. John, anything else on this one? You want to hit the next one? We'll continue with the motion on the next play because there's many reasons to, to motion. It's going to tell you uh, a lot about the defense, but it's also going to put the defense in a spot where they have to communicate. And when you have a team that wants the pressure, that wants the blitz, they're going to have to communicate with motion. 
It's going to create switches on the back end. It's going to change sometimes where the pressure is coming from based off the strength of the formation. And in this case, you can see two times where communication takes place for the Minnesota Vikings. First is Romeo Dobbs comes across the line of scrimmage. You can see 24 and Harrison Smith. They're communicating right there. All right, our, our one and two are now switched off. You got the tight end. I got the wide receiver. And we're going to play this thing inside out. On the other side, you see the same thing take place between the safety and the corner at the top of the field. And I can only imagine that safety stall process as he gets switched to Bo Melton, who runs a 4-3, 440, thinking, I got to cover him on a deep cross all the way across this field. This thing is not fair. Now, Jordan Love, once again, he understands I got a concept that's a quick game to my right. I got a little bit longer of a pass game concept to the left. If I can give the illusion that I'm going quick game, if I can get them to bite on the right side, I might have to buy some time. There might be a little bit of pressure here with the way that the Vikings are coming, but I can dump this thing up over top to Bo Mountain, who once again, I don't throw it to Bo. I throw it to a space and let him run underneath it. Yeah, absolutely. And this was, I mean, you, you hit on something that just there, John, that seemed to be something that, that LaFleur really did well, I thought, in this game, which was pairing those little quick game concepts with some of those kind of deeper hitting concepts. So if the protection holds well, if everything looks good, you got the chance for the deeper one. If not, maybe you got a quick game. I thought Love operated really well with the quick game. Uh, I mean, as far as his processing stuff, we operated really well quick game. But also, as we're seeing here as well, if something deeper was there, he was more than willing to throw that. I know I talked about the blitz numbers at the top. Uh, well, his A dot against the blitz, I think, was what eight point nine yards. He's been yeah. like, he's been averaging around five or six. Like he was gunning against the blitz in this game, which you love. Seeing. People are going to stop blitzing Jordan Love because he has had his most success this year against the blitz. He's among the leaders in the NFL throwing against the blitz this year. And this is a big reason why when you watch it from the backside, you'll see he wants to go to the quick game side, but the Vikings play that perfectly. They have a nice three-man concept there, the pass off between Harrison Smith and the corner when they go inside out. So he knows I got to buy a split second here to put this ball over the top for Bo. Watch it from the backside, Dusty, and you can tell just when Jordan Love makes the switch from the quick game to the deep cross. Yeah, you can watch his feet. I know he kind of he sets to hit that. Looks like he's he's looking hitch on that hang concept, right? He's looking right there. He's gonna hit that and then just transitions, drops back, buys time, floats that suck up over the top. And I mean, I say floats that over the top. That boundary's breaking too. That has to be a pretty good ball. So you got to keep it away from him. You can't just lead him out to the ball on that. Throwing it to space, not to a man. Just another fantastic throw. Jordan Love was dealing in this game, and uh, I don't even think the statistics, which were very good even say how good he played in this football game. No, I, like I said, his, his processing, everything he did, pre-snap, post-snap, reading what they were doing as far as who they were dropping off the line, navigating all that. I know his, his passing chart I was looking at earlier uh, did not have a whole lot of targets to the middle, and I think that was just the way the Vikings muddy that stuff up, but he took it when it was there. I thought he his processing was, was tremendous in this game. Uh, John, we got our last one, man. You want to hit this? Yeah, this is, this is my favorite as far as pre-snap goes, all right? Minnesota's in a zero pressure. Once again, we got third and seven with kind of, let's put them out of their misery type play here. The Packers are already up big in this ball game, but you want to finish it in a good way. You want to finish it with the first down here. They got a zero pressure. Other than motion, you can use shifts as well to mess up a defense. Watch what happens when Jordan Love changes this play, this protection, shifts Patrick Taylor over to the left. That's a full slide, okay? That is a five-man slide, not a four-man slide. He changes it to a five-man slide, and with that puts the running back to the left side. What that does is Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith was going to blitz if Patrick Taylor stayed to the right. Harrison Smith does not have enough time to get to the other side of the line of scrimmage and actually blitz Patrick Taylor, so he kind of reads Patrick Taylor with eyes as Patrick Taylor goes over to help the right side. Jordan Love understands he's got full protection now based off of his protection adjustment before the snap of the ball. And Bo Melton now, who has burnt the Vikings twice, is one-on-one on the outside with off coverage. They are going to respect his speed now. And Jordan Love knows I have an easy toss for a first down. Just that's playing the game before you ever snap the football. I love seeing that. Yeah, no, that's 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 really good stuff. That the protection stuff is stuff I am still not good at at all. So I love I love calling that out, and especially as we talked about against this Vikings team, that stuff's got to be aces, man. You got to be bang on with that stuff. And I thought the, the the love did a good job with that, as you've just pointed out here. And then recognizing, all right, man, I got this blocked up. I know where I need to go. I was <laughs> trying to chart the defense on this, and I was like, I don't know, man. Is it? 
kind of a quarters umbrella stuff. You've got a whole bunch of guys up there. You've got five on the back end. I mean, they're just playing third and seventh. They're just playing sticks, basically, right? They've got a whole yeah. bunch of rushers, and they're just playing sticks. They're playing sticks, and that little shift at the end had them a little wonky. You can tell. Watch, Harrison Smith, he's coming here. They're blitzing this thing. He's not going to drop out of this. Once they make the switch to a five-man slide, Harrison Smith's like, where, where are we going? Where are we? I'm just dropping. I'm covering the sticks here on this one. Just that's what shifts in motion can do pre-snap. But that's a part of a plan. When you face a defense like the new Minnesota Vikings, Brian Flores, they want to trick you. But what can you do conversely to them right before the snap of the ball that can get them thinking, that can get them talking and possibly miscommunication? You got to come into it with a plan and you got to execute. Matt LaFleur had the plan. Jordan Love executed it. But honestly, Dusty, I watched that entire, you know, 75 plays or however many the Packers had. You could have given about two dozen players a game ball because of how well the entire offense played in this football game. Craft continues to flash. I mean, run game and pass game. Craft continues to look good. Aaron Jones obviously looked great. I thought Zach Tom was just – Zach Tom, indispensable in this game. Like, just – there was – the entire offense just rolling, buddy. One of these days we're going to do an offensive line breakdown, and we're going to show just how far Zach Tom has come, Rasheed Walker has come. Elton Jenkins is back to being, ooh, just pancake Jenkins. It's it's a fantastic thing. The entire Packer offense deserved the game ball from this one. Yeah, Sean Ryan, too. I didn't look at him too much. I thought Sean Ryan looked tremendous as well. And we didn't even mention Bo Melton being the first Packers wide receiver to go over 100 yards this year. Yeah, we didn't even look at that last play. The play he went over that was particularly funny. But, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be one of those fun little quiz show stats in a little bit. Who is the one receiver in 2023 that went over 100 yards for the Green Bay Packers? Bo Melton, of course. Uh, John, appreciate this as always. You got anything else for us today? Well, let's just hope that the offense continues. Uh, big game plan this week, Chicago Bears rush defense, number one in the National Football League. How creative can we get on that end? Because I thought specifically against the Vikings – Sprinkling in the run game to keep them honest and Aaron Jones back to 100% played a big part in what they were able to do in the pass game. They're going to need that this Sunday against the Bears team. That's one five out of their last seven. Big game, same spot they were in last year. Let's see if they can get over the hump. Winning your end, man. Let's go get it, John. Appreciate you as always, man. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.